How do closures work in JavaScript? We are going to talk about this, that, you, me, everybody. So let's get started. In the previous video, we saw that if you declare a variable inside a function that is not accessible outside of it, and it would start throwing error because of the lexical scope. The lexical scope means any inner variable is not available outside, but any outer scoped variable is available inside. Now, closure function is a function that can access its outside variable and it closes around that. Usually in practice, we do not consider these functions which are defined in global scope closures, although technically they are. So we are going to create a closure which is defined not on the global scope. Let's say we want to create an ID generator for different applications. So we are going to create a closure for that. We're going to rename this function and we are going to call this ID generator. And we are also renaming the scope comments. Finally, we are going to create a closure around it. For this, we are going to accept an app name which is going to be considered a prefix. So let's call this prefix. And then what we want to do is to return a value here or return a function here and this function would essentially return some string and in this function we want to accept a version so what we are going to call here is version and then in return from here we want to basically return back a string which contains both the prefix and the version so we are going to do something like prefix and here underscore version and the version would be defined just like this. Since we are using TypeScript, I've also defined the types of these two variables. And I've also mentioned the comment around laying down the scope of the closure function. So here you can see that we are accessing this prefix variable, which is coming from outside of this closure function, which is in the scope of ID generator. But since this is an inner function, the outer variables are available to this. And that's why this is called a closure because this closes around this prefix value. Now I'm going to create a generator for two different applications, one for mail and one for calendar. So let's say we have a mail ID generator, which is an ID generator of type mail. Now you can notice that this is still a function because this ID generator returns back this function that we are going to call later. But we are passing the prefix here, which comes inside here. And then that would be utilized when we are calling further down the line, this closure function. So I'm also going to create another generator called calendar ID generator. And in here we are going to provide the prefix as calendar. Then let's have some console logs to see some versions. So I'm going to create a console log in which I'm going to use mail ID generator with the version now, because this mail ID generator right now is this function. We need to pass the version and it would return us both values or a string with prefix underscore version. Similarly, I'm going to call another time the mail ID generator and two times the calendar ID generator. And if I log now, you can see that we got the first output of mail, the second output of mail, and then two outputs for calendar as well. And you can see that I did not have to provide the prefix afterwards. I only needed to create it once when I was creating this mail ID generator with the prefix. Essentially, what we are doing is that we are creating this ID generator by providing a prefix, which is essentially a function that we can call later on without having to provide prefix every time. And this is one potential use of closures. Another really important aspect of closure is that you can hide or encapsulate variables, which means that you can make them private using closures. For example, let's suppose we also had a company ID that we wanted to include in this string. So what would happen is that in here, you could define a company ID. You could also use this just like this. And now anyone can provide a prefix and a version using these two executions, but no one can override this variable company ID nor access it. And if I hit play, you will see that the company ID would also be outputted with this result. Super cool, right? If you found this video useful, like this, share this and follow me for more.